give honor to God and thank God for this privilege that we call life. I don't know where you've been, but where I've been has taught me don't take morning for granted. Amen. Don't take the morning for granted. When was I here last, Pastor Clark? What was that? A year and a half ago. That was just a few months after my surgery. And uh, I was just as happy to be alive then as I am now. <laughs> so I thank God for waking me up this morning. When I was a child, that was a slogan. But the older I get, the more real that thanks becomes. Amen. Anybody glad to be alive? And I thank God for your pastor, Greater Clark. <laughs> I just can't believe this little guy. He just fascinates me. And I just love him and his wife and his son and this church. I just, I can't stay away from all. I don't go out on Sunday morning. You know, I don't go out on Sunday morning. And, and uh, I, I just could not say no. I could not say no. This is Baby Blessing Sunday at First Baptist. It's a couple of weeks before Christmas. But I, I wouldn't care when Clark asked me to come here. <laughs> I tell you, you, you can't say no to him either, can you? Come on, give your pastor a round of applause. Man. I, just, I just love him. I just love him. And if y'all not careful, I'm just going to bring him to New Jersey. We need guys like him in New Jersey. See, y'all are saved down here. Y'all in Texas. <laughs> we got sin in the air in New Jersey. And to the officers of this church and to all of you, my special friend Joyce Dugar. Joyce uh, has represented Greater on our monthly conference calls with churches around the country who are thinking about doing D-Free. You know, y'all did it first, so I... I, tell, I say, Joyce, tell them about your pastor and your church. And she tells them, too. She came over to my church a couple of months ago. We had a national symposium for D-Free. She came and just took over. Just took over. Just, just in charge, you know, in New Jersey. It's just... So what I did, Pastor Clark, what I did, you know, because I've been doing this a while, she took over, so I acted like it was my idea that she took over. See? <laughs> that way people would think I was behind it. But thank you, Joyce, for your friendship and your love through, through the years. And uh, thank you, Greater, for allowing me to come. Thank you for being a great church. Amen. Thank you for being a great church. Not, not every church wants to be great in eight ways. You know, <laughs> you know mo most churches say, well, I, well, you know, we'll try two or three, but my God, eight, eight ways, eight, eight ways. That's, that's, that's a real church. And uh, I'm blessed to be friends with your pastor and for, with this church. Thank you for the great work you're doing, and I look forward to working with you as we, as we pay off a billion dollars of family debt around the country. Now, this is your 82nd anniversary. And I'm here to celebrate that. By the grace of God, here we are. We just celebrated our 80th anniversary. We had to postpone our celebration because of the storm we just had. And many of you prayed for our, for our region. We're still recovering from the storm. But uh, whether it's eight, 80 years, 82 years, or eight minutes, God has been good. Amen. God has been good. Yeah. I know you know that because this is the early crowd. See, you, See, some folk come to church later on just because, you know, it's the thing to do. Nobody comes to church this early just because it's the thing to do. That's right. If you're in church this early, you either love the Lord or your mother said, you better come to church, girl. <laughs> Amen. 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 I want to, uh, I want to read this text here. Uh, this is, this is uh, an unusual uh, occasion, and, and I want to do something unusual. I want to share with you something that, that we usually share at the end of the service. And I'd like this to be the basis of our time together. The book of Numbers and the uh, sixth chapter. While I'm here today, uh, at this service, I'm praying that the Lord will help me 
talk about the, uh, the blessing of the church. At the next service, I've asked the Lord to help me talk about the battle of the church. And then at the third service, if I still can talk, uh, I'm, I'm, I've asked the Lord to help me explain the beginning of the church. I'm not saying that because I want y'all to stay around. Uh, the purpose of three services is to get y'all out of here to bring the other crowd in. But I'm saying that so you know how to pray for me while you're at, at breakfast, all right? <clears throat> Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. The Lord said to Mo, do y'all stand? What, don't be sitting while y'all, you know, get me in trouble. <laughs> That's right, don't get me in trouble. Please, stand up. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless. Somebody say bless. bless. This is how, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. Amen. 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 Lord, take this word and sanctify it to your use. And hide me behind the cross that someone might see Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. When we gather for this type of celebration, it is appropriate to thank God for 82 years of blessings. Amen. I listened to the historical commentary and it suggested that God had done some concrete things for this church and through this church in 82 years. Amen. In 82 years, God has blessed this church with leaders who have had intellect, imagination, and integrity. In 82 years, God has blessed this church to grow physically and to prosper financially. In 82 years, God has allowed this church to become known far beyond the regions that it serves. In 82 years, God has brought this church, what we might say in the old time way, a mighty long way. Amen. When you think back to 1930 and what the founders of this church had in mind, look at what we have today. One might conclude that we have exceeded all of what they imagined that this church has become greater Amen. even than the founder's vision. And we thank God continuously. We pause reflectively. We celebrate humbly the things that God has done. And when we say we've been blessed, we can articulate and we can enunciate with great clarity what those blessings look like. It's not unlike Thanksgiving or marital anniversaries or birthdays when we count our blessings. And if we do it the way the songwriter said, we name them one by one. And in so doing, it becomes clear to us that God is a tangible God. That God is not just up there somewhere out yonder but that God is a right now tangible God. Amen. It pays to look back, young people. It pays to reflect new members. It pays for the senior saints and the pillars of the church to really recall right. the goodness of God. Right. Because when we look back in a church like this, we have to, we, we have to embrace the reality that as modern as we've come, become and as high tech as we are and as sophisticated as the church might be that there's still some old school stuff 
that really gets it right. He, he has made a way when it looked like there was no way. And that, that, that while we have degrees now and we know Greek languages and Hebrew and cordless microphones and we have all kinds of video and streaming and CDs, it's, it's good to pause sometime, Pastor Clark, and, and just remind ourselves that he, he is bread when you're hungry. Yeah. You know, and, and he is water when you're thirsty. And for 82 years, we, we have gathered to affirm the fact that he's a doctor who still has never lost a case. And, and he's a lawyer in the courtroom. He still makes crooked ways straight. And he has made rough places plain that, that God has been good. And anniversaries give us a chance to punctuate our thanksgiving and to make our praise particular yes. but but when this word was given to 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 Aaron through Moses by God notice that the word bless is the word that God used God said I want you to bless the people of Israel and if we're not careful we will confine the concept of blessing to, to the things that we just listed, to, to the trinkets that we own, to the tangible things that we have. But, but this word reminds us that, that God's blessings far exceed the things that we have and, and the list that we make and, and the church that we have and the property that we own and the money that we make because God said, he said, tell Aaron to bless the people. Notice he didn't say, give the people more food. Notice when God said, Bless the people. He didn't say give the people more water. He didn't say bless the people and give the people nicer clothing. He didn't say bless the people and refund them the gold that they lost when they made the golden calf. No, he said bless the people and give them this word. This indicates that God's blessings should not be limited to the things that we put under our Christmas tree or, or the accomplishments that we put on our resume or the clothes we put on our back or the shoes we put on our feet. The, those are blessings, but, but God said, I want you to bless the people of Israel and give them this word, the Lord bless you and keep you. Yeah. See, the keeping power of God, that's a blessing too. He, he, he wanted the word to go out and say that, that God is good whether you have a job or not. God is good whether you're sick or whether you're well. That God is good if you have a big church or a small church. If you drive a big car or a small car. If you live in a house or a small apartment. That God is good not only because of what God gives you. God is not Santa Claus. But God is good because God will keep you. He'll keep you. I know it doesn't sound like much, and I, don't, I know it doesn't feel like much, but it, it, it would resonate in the minds of those who heard it because God looked over the people of Israel while they were in slavery, God kept them. And then when they were in the wilderness and there was no water to drink, they got water from rocks. They had pillars by night of fire. God kept them when they got to the Red Sea and there was no way out. God kept them. In other words, God will keep you. That's a blessing right there. That's a blessing right there. God, God has keeping power. God will keep keep you. Have you ever thought like you were about to lose your mind? Yeah. Guess what? You didn't lose your mind. God kept you. Yeah. Did, did you ever feel like you couldn't make it to the end of the month? Well, you did make it to the end of the month. You know why? God kept you. Yeah. Have you ever thought that 
the enemy was going to win the battle. But guess what? The enemy didn't win the battle. Here you are. God kept you. When you wake up in the morning, it doesn't matter how you feel or look or what you have. Everybody ought to be able to say, God, thank you for keeping me. This, this is a blessing. It's a, it's a blessing because when your boyfriend doesn't keep you and your husband won't keep you and your job won't keep you and the bank won't keep you in your house, there's a God somewhere who will keep you. And can I tell you something? The main thing we need to be kept from is evil. That's why when the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, Jesus said, I had this line, deliver us from evil. Oh, I, I know you're greater than all, all the others, but, but nobody's exempt from evil. I don't care how thick your Bible is. I don't, I don't care how high you jump when you shout. I don't care how many years you've been teaching Sunday school. Nobody is exempt from evil. E evil is like anthrax. It's in the air. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. You can't smell it, but it'll kill you. Evil comes to work every day of the week. Evil sleeps in our houses. Evil eats at our tables. Evil worships in our churches. And you can't whip evil by yourself. And what's so interesting about evil is that, the, you, know, you know, often the thing that we hate the most, the temptations that we resent the most, the, the personality types, that we can't stand the most. If we're not careful, we become just like that. I have a friend who retired at 50. He graduated from high school. He was, he, he was raised in the capital city of our state. And, and when he finished high school, he went to work at the state prison as a guard. And when I asked him why he would, he would retire at 50, he, he, he said to me, I'm not retiring for financial reasons because my pension won't cover my needs. And he said, after I retire, I'll still need a job to cover and make ends meet. So I said, well, why would you leave a good paying job with security and overtime to, to, to retire only to have to get another job? And he said, because I discovered that the longer I work in the prison, the more I begin thinking and acting like the prison. And he said, my job is to be the guard for the inmates but I'm discovering that I'm getting some inmate in me. And you see, you have to be careful because some, sometimes you've got to separate yourself from, from certain types of people because the people that you claim to look down on will, will, will end up being the spirit that jumps in me. In other words, the longer I hang around gossip, I'm going to be a gossiper. Longer I hang around drugs, I'm going to use some drugs. The longer I'm around men that don't love their wives, I'm going to start straying from my wife. But thank God there's a power in heaven. And, and Aaron said, the Lord bless you and keep you. So what we celebrate today is 82 years of the keeping power of God.